right, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining in for today's class. Uh, this is financial accounting revision class with your tutor Samuel Ivanda. We are here to uh, learn once again, okay? Now, uh, some of you joined in the last class and uh, others didn't join in, but I shared the recording. I think last class was a basically a guiding class on how you can maximize the time in the exam to earn the marks that you really uh, can earn, okay? So today we want to, um, to interest ourselves on to this question. Now, um, like I say, this is uh, May 2018 and it's uh, section B, question one, okay? As you can see, right from my screen here. This is a uh, question one of May, 2018, okay? So the first part of the question is section A, which are, are objectives, uh, which are not part of this question paper. So we want to just ask us on to question two. Now the question is, um, why question two for today? I just want to give a background. Uh, those that attend uh, the other class, we just did uh, control accounts, okay? We just did control accounts and um, control accounts, one of the ad uh, advantages of control accounts is to help us uh, prepare financial statements from single entry transactions, okay? So a question like this, uh, this is question two, just for us to just look down and understand what, what is uh, required. This question is requiring us to draw up one, a statement of affairs as at 1st January, a cash book, a statement of P and L, okay? And they want us hint is show all working. So the examiner will always be looking out for our workings, which, which we need to make sure that we show. So we get uh, to our question to just read through to conceptualize what exactly uh, is being examined here. So they are saying that John has been trading uh, since 2012 and his nephew who is, not a train, who is not trained in accounting has been assisting him to keep records in addition to helping him in the shop, okay? John would like to know the profit he made in 2017. You have been hired by John who has availed you the following information, okay? So John has availed us uh, the following information. One, he has uh, given us analysis of payments made during the year 2017. We have uh, cash payments. Under cash payments, we have rent. We have water bills. We have electricity bills. We have bank payments. Uh, and under bank payments, we have salary and wages. We have trading license, okay? Down, we have uh, cash sales for 2017, where 66,734,000, we and they are telling us that 60% of the purchases were in cash, okay? And then they're also telling us that John usually makes a sales margin of 35%, okay? So they are telling us that uh, uh, the item number three, they are saying cash and bank receipts from credit customers were 15 million, okay? And 50 million, 450, 330 respectively, okay? And they are telling us that payments to suppliers during the year were through bank. We move down. They're telling us that John's nephew, who is uh, acting as the accountant, has provided the following balances at 1st January and 31st December 2017, okay? At the beginning of there and at the end of there. So we have 1st January, we have a motorcycle. Uh, we have a motorcycle costing uh, 4.5 and uh, on 1st January, they are giving us uh, 3.6. Now that 3.6 they are giving us is the net book value, okay? As the 4.5 is, um, is the cost, what they are giving us as the 3.6 is the net book value, which is net of the accumulated depreciation, okay? Important to understand. Then we have furniture, 
uh, which furniture they are saying, uh, furniture the cost is 9 million, furniture the cost is 9 million, and then uh, the net book value is 7.5, okay? So that's important. And then um, the other is cash. Cash is 800, 8,650,000. They have only given us the beginning cash, what we started with. The same thing with bank. They have also given us uh, 2.3, okay? Now, wherever they, you see a question mark, wherever you see a question mark, it means that we are, should actually find out. We should make sure we find out what those figures are, okay? So it's uh, important for us to uh, understand. And the same thing, uh, we have inventory. Uh, inventory, they have given us uh, figures for 1st January, 4,560,400. And then uh, for 31st December, they have given us 7,560,500. Okay, they have also given us trade payables. Uh, trade payables, trade payables is 9,567,000. Five, and then uh, December, 10,564,000, okay? We also have salaries outstanding, okay? Uh, salaries outstanding, we have 1.7, we are starting with, and then we have um, 3.4 that we have at the end of uh, the year, okay? And then we also have 15 million, 550,000 for receivables, and then 18 million, 765,670 as at the end of the year. They continue to tell us that the motorcycle and furniture have a useful life of five years and six years respectively. And they are telling us that these are depreciated using the straight line method, okay? They are saying that it was John's habit to cash out 100,000 every two weeks from the business for nanny business use, okay? And they're telling us that this went on for the whole year, okay? So we go down. We know very well that that statement means that there is a drawing somewhere. They're also telling us further information available shows that the total bill for water for the year was actually 2.340, okay? And then uh, they're also telling us that the rent paid covered 18 months to June 2018. Part eight says, during the year, John acquired an interest-free loan, okay? Cash from his cousin, and use the whole amount to pay for land where he's to relocate his business, okay? He repaid the cousin 6 million in cash by the end of the year. The balance was to be repaid in 2018, okay? So down there asking us, prepare for John. For their ended 31st December, 2017, a statement of affairs as at 1st January, and then they also want us to prepare a cash book, okay? And then they also want us to prepare a statement of profit or loss. Hint, show all your workings, 20 marks, okay? So that is the question that we really have. I think the previous questions that we've handled have had the trial balance and uh, we, we just use the trial balance to prepare the rest of the statements, okay? But for this question, as you can see, and you'll actually come across similar questions, even along your study, okay? And these questions, um, we call them a single entry, okay? Single entry, even on your syllabus, you'll be able to see them there. It's basically usually related to businesses that are small in nature, that cannot afford an accountant, and don't have, uh, don't have systematic records, okay? They have a few records but their records are not, uh, cannot fully give us a, a ready trial balance that we can use to prepare the rest of uh, the financial statements. So we need to deploy uh, some calculations to be able to determine the figures that we should actually be able to use to prepare our financial statements. 
So the first part of the question is asking us to prepare a statement of affairs as at 1st January, okay? And they're giving these three marks. Now, um, statement of affairs should be something that is familiar to all of you or most of you. Uh, I think those that have been part of the classes before. A statement of affairs is basically, uh, it's, 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 it's a list of, uh, of course, it's like, it's like a balance sheet, but it's a balance sheet at the start of the financial period, okay? And the reason why we draw up is our statement of affairs is to determine the capital, okay? To determine capital. Now, our statement of affairs is also very common when it comes to nanny for profit. And I think uh, some of my students here, you must, have, you must have seen it the first time when we're doing uh, the nanny for, nanny for profit, okay? But it's this, it also relates to the side of profit business as well, but it is just, in simplest form, it's just like a balance sheet at the start of the financial period. And it's reason why we draw it up, especially when it comes to, um, to questions like these ones of, uh, of, of single entry is because we want to determine the capital. As you can see, I think what we've just gone through, we didn't see anywhere where they indicated anything to do with capital, the capital of contributed for the business, okay? as you can see. So that is why what we are supposed to, to do. They are giving it uh, very few marks, so you shouldn't take a lot of time on this, okay? Yeah. So um, I hope you're following and uh, uh, how I encourage you, uh, the best way to follow is to also have a pen and paper so that even before I get down to, uh, to, sh to, sh to write, write the answer or us going through, you at least you're, you're trying to think with your pen, okay? Trying to think with your pen to see what exactly you need to be able to write down, okay? So that is very important. It's not good to just uh, follow through with eyes and you're not noting anything down. It really, uh, it really disturbs you and you may not easily, you may not easily get the best out of the class. So that's uh, very important for us to, to know. Okay, and uh, as the norm, uh, we usually use um, the chat box, okay, to ask any questions that you may have in regards to the class. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so um, I'll use the Excel to just uh, go through the question. Just right here. So the first thing that we are preparing, like it has been asked, we are preparing John's statement of affairs, okay? So John's statement of affairs. on his statement of affairs. And this is as at 1st Jan, January 2017, okay? Yeah, 
as you can see. So we shall go proceed to, to get the details that we have. So as you can see, all this information given us, this is all for what happened during the year. My interest is what was beginning, okay? The beginning values. So I'll move down, this was also during the period. So these are the balances that I'm going to use in, the, in drawing up my statement of affairs, okay? So they have given me uh, respective balances. So I'm just going to pick, I think, I think as you can see, I've been given the motorcycle, furniture and all that. So I'm just going to uh, uh, start on the other side. So what I'll do, I'll just come here and send any current asset. I said like, just like the way a balance sheet would look like, we, we're starting with our nanny current asset. So we have, um, as you can see, we have, uh, we have furniture and motor vehicle right there. So motorcycle is 3.6 million. So motorcycle. I'll put the amount there. Okay, the amount in shillings, so I'll include that there. This is furniture. Furniture is 7.5. So you also know that there. So you should also be doing it on your side as we proceed, okay? for easy following. And then and, uh, these are the only ones that we are seeing as the non current assets or fixed assets. Um, I don't have any other. So what I'll basically do, I'll get the total and move to, to the rest, okay? I'll move the current assets. So total. Nani current asset. Sorry. Field. So just add that up and have that. Then I'll move to my current assets. Okay. So my current assets, I have cash and bank. Okay. I have cash and bank, cash, let's pick the figures here. Remember these figures are the start of the year, okay? These figures are the start of the year, not the end of the year, okay? For the end of the year, as you can see, there are question marks. So we are going to draw up different accounts to determine to replace those question marks with figures, okay? So that should be the principle. Then we have bank, bank, which is 2.3, okay, right there. The other current asset we have is uh, inventory. Uh, inventory. This is 4 million. That okay, and then um, trade payables, those are liabilities, salaries outstanding, those are also liabilities. Trade receivables is the other that I'll, I'll take. Okay, I'll take trade receivables trade receivables or datas. Okay, it's about 15 million. Mine is to search and see, do I have any other that I've not captured? Okay, I don't seem to see any. So I'll go ahead to just get the total before I can proceed to 
my liabilities, okay? So total of current assets gives me 30 that and I can get my total assets total assets which is a summation of what is up and down okay this plus this which gets me 42060 that so after that uh, since this is a statement of affairs what I'll move to is my current liabilities okay or which I'll call uh less liabilities remember we are determining we are determining our capital okay and what we uh, the way we are determining our capital we are picking it from uh, from the accounting equation the accounting equation says that assets should equal to uh, capital or liabilities plus capital okay so if i want to determine my capital I can just take uh, liabilities, the other side. So I'll have assets less liabilities like that. That is what I'll basically do have. So right here, I'm lessing my liabilities means that uh, I'm now going to pick my liabilities. And as you saw, we had our trade payables as the first tier, okay? The trade payables, speaking about, trade payables and then we have salaries outstanding salaries outstanding the reason why i'm taking it as a liability of course um it is you who pays salaries so at the end of the um this was at the start of the period so it means that this salary is related to the previous period so you hadn't paid them okay so they, they were a liability to you that was to be settled within the period, okay? So that is why uh, you must be uh, well conversant with these end, end of year adjustments, okay? So salary is outstanding. Salary outstanding is that, and then, um, yeah i th i think that is all uh that we see for liabilities i don't see any other okay so what i'll do definitely if there was any other they would have included it but all this information that is is within the additional information basically happened within the year and at the year end okay so if we are trying to look for information that happened only at this at the start of the year we can only get it from the balances so um once i've gotten now i don't have i don't i didn't have um long-term liabilities or any current liabilities okay in case i had them I, I i would have included them okay and after i've gotten that i'll now just get my capital okay my capital or opening capital which is the difference between this and that okay to give me 30 seven nine three four hundred so this is your capital that capital as at first jan 2017 okay so this is what you needed to do to earn the three marks from the examiner okay right there that is what we needed to basically do so we move to the next part of the question. The next part of the question is telling us to, uh, to draw up our cash book, okay? Next part of the question is asking us to draw up our cash book. So basically John's cash book. A lot of writing, but few months. Pardon? Somebody's it's asking something? <laughs> no, I'd say it's too much writing, but only three months. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, 
that is what exactly happens. So <laughs> you have to make sure that you give it a good, good, good kind of, uh, you do it very fast so you move away from it. But it's just copy and paste anyway. So all the same. So my cash book, I'll draw. Um, now, if you're trying to look at, uh, uh, just to brief you, you know, um, a cash book, we have three cash books, okay? We have the single column cash book, single column. We have the two column cash book. And then we have the three column cash book. Okay. Now, the single column basically uh, is just has, let's say, cash. Okay. It has cash or it combines cash and bank. Okay. In a single column. That is why we, we say that we call it single column. Then uh, two column has cash column and then it has a bank column, okay? That is what happens. And then the three column cash book has a cash bank and then discount column, okay? That is what happens with the three columns. So if you look at uh, John's scenario here, if you look at this question of John up here, you see that um, I don't, I didn't see any discounts being highlighted, but I happen to see that the cash payments and the bank payments were separated from each other, okay? So ideally, given that background, that I don't see discounts within this question, I'll choose to use the column, the two column cash book, okay? I'll choose to draw the two column cash book. Now, the question should be, why even are we drawing up this cash book? Of course it has been asked, but when you get down, when you get down in these values they have given, uh, do you see here, cash and bank, they have not given us the values at the end of the period. So when we are drawing up our cash book, we are basically also deriving what are our balances at the end of the period, okay? What are balances at the end of the period? So that is what, that is our intention. So that's why I'm choosing to use the two column cash book, okay? So what I'll basically do, uh, this, uh, this will be my columns. So I'm going to have cash and bank, okay? I'm going to have cash and bank, of course, um, the format, the way that the two column cash book would look like, of course, it can have um, it can have the date, okay? It can have then the detail, okay? Like that. So in the same way, I'll also have the similar, similar details this other side. The cash detail and bank, okay? Column because the detail column is a bit longer because it has a narration in it, but that should be basically the principle. So in case I had a discount, I would definitely add a discount here, okay? Just, for, uh, just to know that in a cash book, a discount, the discount that is on the debit side, remember this is the debit side of our cash book. And then this other side is our credit side. So the discounts that are this side are discounts that relate to our customers, okay? Because it is it is customers that pay us that we uh, and we debit our cash book. When um when we receive uh let's say when we, when it is us that are paying, and that means that we are receiving the discounts. The discounts will actually be on this side, will be on the credit side. So the discount that is on the debit side here is called discount allowed okay and then the discount that is on this side is called discount received so you need to know which where which discount so 
each discount is on the side that corresponds to uh, its transactions. So the transaction of customers paying us are on the debit side. So the corresponding discount is, is, is there, okay? And that is why you see if, if for example, a customer is paying you, maybe, uh, maybe they are supposed to pay you maybe 10 million and you've given them a 10% discount, that means they will pay you 9 million. So you re record the 9 million here and record the other 1 million in this column, okay? To recognize that. So that is just the principle. I just felt I should highlight that for you, just in case you still have some challenges with understanding what a cash book is, okay? So I'll just draw a middle line here for us to understand. So that is what we basically do have. Okay, so once I have my cash book right there, I'm now going to start, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm going to start, let me put this column right here. Okay. Okay, so you can draw the respective columns from your side there. So I will now, I will now go to the question, okay? And for me, I start immediately. So I'll go back up and see what is exactly happening. Now, one of the things you should know that if you're drawing up an account or you're drawing up a cash book, the first things that you should look out for are what? A balance is brought down, okay? A balance is brought down. Every time you're drawing up a cash book, the first thing that you should record are your balances brought down. Okay. So I go down and get my balances brought down. Sorry, just up here. So my balance is brought down for cash and bank. I have eight, eight million that and then bank this value. Okay. So I'll just go and record them respectively. Would I already have them the other side? So what I'll just do, I'll come here. This is first, uh, first of January, 2017, okay? And the detail is balance brought down. Balance brought down, okay? So under cash, I'm going to, to write, I'm just going to pick a, a leaf from this figure since I already recorded them here. So under cash, I'm going to have that value. And then under bank, I'll still have 2.3. Those are, are my balances brought down from what they have been given, okay? So that is what I basically do have. And I'm, um, I'm making, I'm putting these balances on the debit side because cash and bank are assets, okay? And assets have a normal debit balance. But there are also cases where the examiner will give you something like this. Where you see bank, this 2.3, they can put this 2.3 in a bracket, okay? Now, if they put this 2.3 in a bracket, means that bank has uh, a credit balance. And in that case, it would mean that you have a bank overdraft. So in such cases, what will happen is when you come to your, um, to your cash book, instead of recording this value here, you'll actually record it on this other side, okay? Where you have, so it's only, it's only bank that can have a credit balance in the cash book, okay? Cash does not have. So it's important for you to understand that. So once I've recorded uh, what exactly um, my balances are for the start of the period, now I'll go to the start and look out around for any payments that were made and any receipts that were received, okay? So they are telling me, um, uh, you've been hired as by John to have unveiled you this information. So we have analysis of payments made during there. We have rent, we have water bills, we have electricity bills, okay? So these are cash payments. So just as I've been given these things is the same way I'll also pick, pick and take them the other side, okay? So just come to my cash book. 
right there. Now, uh, uh, separate. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't have dates to this transaction. So the date column, I'll not fill anything. I'll just move here and uh, just uh, try to sort this out. So this is 18. So you make sure if you're filling your cash book also on that other side, okay? Yeah, so I've put them under my cash column, okay? Like that. So I'll come right here as well. Um, my bank payments are these, so I'll also go and record the bank payments. Remember payments are recorded on the credit side of the cash book, okay? Because cash and bank um, are assets. And when assets are increasing, we debit. When they're decreasing, we credit, okay? Yeah. So remember that as we are crediting here in the respective accounts of water bills, electricity bills, whatever we are actually uh, debiting. So it's important because these are expenses. And when expenses are happening, we actually, uh, we, we, we do, when expenses are increasing, we actually debit them, okay? So it's important for us to understand that. Okay, so uh, that is with the payments. I'll now move back to the question down here. So they are telling me of cash sales. They are telling me that the cash sales for 2017 were 66 million, okay? So that is another thing that I should record. I should go and record the 66 million. On which side? On the debit side, okay? Because cash sales increase your, your cash. So I'll come here under my details and I'll put cash sales. I record under the column of cash like that. Then I'll move here. Then they are telling me that 60% of the purchases for the year were in cash. Okay. 60% of the purchases for the year were in cash. So even before I proceed, Mine is to ask myself, so where are what? Where are the purchases? They have given me sales. They have given me sales, but they have not given me the purchases. So what does that mean? I have to determine, I have to determine my sales. I have to determine my purchases, okay? Now, before I determine my purchases, let me first uh, get uh, record uh, a few things that I can see, then I'll determine purchases later on, okay? And that I do it also as a time, to, uh, as a strategy to manage time, okay? In case, uh, because this one is going to take me some time, let me first get what, what I can just input immediately, okay? I'll just leave this out for now. I will try to record this. You're telling me the cash, cash at back receipts from cash, credit customers were 15 million, okay? So as this was direct sales that were sold on cash, we also have, Cash that cash and bank receipts from credit customers. Okay, so I'll just uh, try to go ahead to record uh, these as well. So this is fifteen million. Okay, fifteen five hundred forty. So I'll come here, and um, these are receipts from customers. So I'll just say receipts from customers, from credit customers. Okay. So they are telling us that for cash, they were actually 15,500, okay? And then uh, we can try to, to see what was exactly for, for our bank. So bank was 50, 450, okay? So those ones you input as you can see right there, okay? So that is one thing. Then I'll move to here. Let me John's uh, nephew provided the following balance. These balances are not relevant for me now to include in the cash book. They are basically balances. The motorcycle has a useful life of five years, not relevant at the moment. 
there's something here where they're saying that it was John's habit to take out cash 100,000 every two weeks from the business for nanny business use, okay? And they're telling us that this went on for the whole year. So these are drawings and drawings have to be catered for in our books of accounts, okay? Drawings have to be catered for in our books of accounts. But now the question is, if John was, how many, okay, if John was taking 100,000 every two weeks for the whole year, your first question should be, how many weeks are in a year? How many weeks are in a year, okay? Now, uh, for, I know you can, you can easily calculate because we have 365 days, okay? And each, each, each week has, okay, each week has seven days. So you can see we have about 52.1429, okay? So the examination purposes, please consider 52 weeks, okay? Either which paper that you're doing, 52 weeks is the standard because actually we have 52 weeks in a year, okay? So they're telling us that John takes uh, takes 100,000, not per week, okay? But takes this after every two weeks, okay? So we want this basically bi-weekly. So mine is to, to determine what are those uh, two weeks, like how many two weeks do I have in, in a year, okay? So I'll just basically divide the 52 divided by two, which gives me 26, okay? So this 26 is what I'll actually multiply by the 100,000. So in reality, John actually takes 2.6 for the whole year in terms of drawings, okay? So that's important. So what I'll just come, I'll just come here and put drawings. Remember it's a credit on your cash book because it is reducing your cash, okay? And they have told me that these are cash drawings. So I'm going to record them right here under the column of cash, like that, okay? So that's important for us to understand. And then um, we proceed to our question to get the uh, those uh, free, free, free marks. So they are telling us that for further information available shows that the total bill for water for the year was 2.340, okay? This is a bill for water, not payment for water. So you don't take this direct to, uh, to, 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 to the cash book, okay? But we are going to we are going to be able to find out what what goes to the cash book, how much was paid. Okay. For example, I'll give you an example. For example, if it's water bill, you look at this 2.340 and just go back and look at the balances. Okay. Actually, they have already given us the cash payment. So of, of for the water bills and so on. So we, we only consider the cash payments. We wouldn't have to even uh, struggle to, to look for it because we have already been given it that value, the payment, and we've already recorded it, okay? So the same thing also happens. Okay, they are telling us here that the rent pays, uh, the rent paid covers a period of 18 months. So we are also going to tackle this separately, okay? But this does not affect our cash book. Remember the cash book, for it records cash and bank, no matter how uh, how long uh, you've paid for, either you've paid for 12, two months or 18 months, we shall definitely record the amount you've paid, okay? That is our the cash. But when it comes to the rent account, okay? Because this rent they are speaking about, the rent paid, I think we saw uh, the, rent, the rent paid here. This rent of 18,000, they are just telling you that Part of it does not relate to 2017. Part of it relates to six, I think six months for the next period because it's for 18 months. So it, it relates, partly relates to a portion that relates to June 2018. And you know what that means? Means that we are going to, um, uh, it's, a, it's a prepayment, okay? It's a prepayment which has to, uh, we have to deduct what relates to up to, from uh, 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 what relates to 2017 is what we are going to consider. It means that whatever relates to 2018, we have to subtract it from that value, okay? Important. So they're also telling us down here that during the year, okay, John acquired, during the year, John acquired a loan 
worth 15 million from his cousin and use the whole amount to pay for land where is to relocate the business okay he had repaid the cousin 6 million in cash by the end of the year the balance was to be repaid in 2018 okay so what we are going to do is also to record these transactions as they happen we are going to record these transactions as you can see there so um the first that we shall record is the loan okay the 15 million so we shall go to our debit side here and say loan loan post loan from cousin now they have told us that this was a cash loan okay so i'll record it under the column of cash if it was a bank loan that would be on a bank okay so and then they are telling us that this whole amount was used to pay for land where it's relocate the business now i want to highlight to you that sometimes the examiner would may want to confuse you and bring something and say that uh to pay for land where john's house is located like where john john's personal house is located now if you have such a transaction that transaction will be a personal transaction to john's life okay not to the business so that transaction you wouldn't record it but the fact that talking about the business here we bought this land for the business it means that that's the reason why we are recording this whole transaction okay so that is why we recorded the 15 million under the column of cash and we are also going ahead to record the land okay we are going to record the payment for the land so they are telling us i think as you can see here they're saying the whole amount was used to pay for land so i'm going to record i'm going to come here and i'm going to record land and i'm going to record uh still the because the whole amount was used to pay for land so as as it it is the other side is how i record it there here okay so that is land the next thing that i also need to be able to record is the payment that uh john has been made has been paying to um to the cousin so they're telling us that he had repaid to the cousin worth six million in cash by the end of the year okay so six million in cash by the end of the year so this is um repayment of loan so i'll also record it under cash definitely okay because um he paid he still paid using cash okay yeah so i'll go back to my question unfortunately this is the last transaction so mine is to confirm that i have actually recorded everything as uh, it has been given that i've not left out anything okay that i should record which which i believe we have we've been able to record um what we have apart from okay apart from there's what we've not recorded we've not recorded the purchases the cash purchases which we have to look for okay so we have to look for the cash purchases and how we are going to look for the purchases uh you're going to see what we are going to do so they have told us um that sales cash sales for 2017 were 66 734000 okay so what i'll do i think i'll start my working one i'll just work it from here just on a separate page I'll start and call this my working one. Since the examiner said show all necessary working, okay? It's good for you to highlight them. So this working one is trying to get our cash purchases, okay? So now cash purchases, we've not been given these purchases. Okay, they have actually not given us purchases. So we're actually determining all the purchases, okay? 
Now, the way to determine these purchases, and you have often come across such similar questions, and I want you to be very, very attentive here, okay? Now, you know from, um, from, uh, from the formula of uh, determining cost of sales, okay? Do we know cost of sales? Cost of sales. Cost of sales is equal to opening stock, add purchases, opening so stock, add purchases, less closing stock. Okay, less closing stock. So opening stock plus purchases, less closing stock. So if that is what we, we have as for cost of sales. Now ours is also to ask ourselves, how are sales, okay? How are sales related? How are sales related to cost of sales, okay? How are sales related? Because the sales figure, they have given us the sales figure to be, okay, the, the, they have given us the cash sales figure just to confirm that this, uh, okay, they have told us the cash sales were 66, okay? And then they have also told us, uh, now those are, not the, that's, those are not the only sales, by the way, okay? It's very important for you to understand that those are not the only sales we have also credit sales, okay? We also have credit sales. But uh, right here, they are giving us uh, cash and bank receipts from credit customers. They are giving us that value as well, okay? And then they are giving us, uh, they are giving us the balances down here. Now, this is where, the control accounts come in, okay? This is where the control accounts come in because ideally we don't have a, a distinct figure for credit sales because we need, we need the credit sales to be able to determine the, the purchase. So we are going to first determine our credit sales, okay? So what we are going to uh, basically do is uh, we are going to draw up our the sales ledger control account, okay? We are going to draw up our sales ledger control account first. This is what usually happens with uh, questions around um, single entry. You have, you don't have a systematic way, like I'm going to do this after this, but you use, the, you you make your decision based on the information they have given you, okay? But in most cases, when it comes to questions that are of single entry in nature, especially where you, you get to a question and uh, you have these, these question marks and they are giving you things like cash sales, credit sales, receipts from credit customers, and then you have to draw up a P and L, and then you don't have some of these balances like for purchases and sales, in full, then you know that you have, you in one way or the other, you need to use the control accounts, okay? So that is why I've taken that direction. So I'm now, I'm going to first draw up my sales ledger control account. Okay, the sales ledger control account. Now from um, your understanding of, of a, a sales ledger control account, it works more so just like, uh, by the, the sales ledger control account can also be called the data's control account, okay? This can also be called the accounts receivable control account. The, the same things are related, okay? I, I could actually also just uh, put it in bracket here for your understanding. This is a data's control account. It is basically controlling our data's balances. And you know that data has come into place because of sales, okay? So that is why they share the name when it comes to that. Now, just 
like the way um, we 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 do for for let's say for debtors, the sales ledger control account also has a balance brought down. Okay, it has a balance brought down, and that balance brought down is on the debit side because this is a debtors control account, and debtors have a normal debit balance. So balance brought down is supposed to be on the debit side. So you also, it, it ask yourself, so what would be my balance brought down from this information I've been given? So do we see these receivables? Like I said, this account is not so much different from the normal receivables account, but for it is just a summary, okay? So I'm going to pick this 15 million because this is my balance at the start of the period. So I have 15 million that I will go and record here, okay? Right there. And then I'll move to, uh, the other is I'll record the balance carried down. This 18 is a balance carried down. So what happens in this account, uh, I'll just uh, try to leave some space and record my balance. Carry it down. So as you saw, as I recorded my balance brought down on the debit side, I should record my balance carried down on this other side. Okay, because it is as it is as it is a balance carried down in this period. It is a balance brought down in the next period. Okay, so that is how those balances interplay, and we shall see it when we, we when we look at other accounts. Okay, so once we have input our balance brought down and then balance carried down. Now, ours is to go back and see what, because here we're trying to look at data, okay? So we are going to look at transactions that increase our data and transactions that decrease our data. So the tr transactions that increase our data should be posted on the debit side, okay? And then transactions that reduce our data should be posted on the credit side. Now, your question should be, what are some of those things that increase your data? One of it could be, of course, a credit sale. When you sell on credit, it means that your data will increase, okay? And one of the other that we looked at yesterday, if you remember, if you have, for example, um, a customer, a customer repayment, okay? Uh, where you have to repay customer, we'll just uh, uh, give you a snapshot here. I think we, we, did, we did something, we did something yesterday, similar to this, okay? This is a, this is a data's contract account. So you can have a repayment, you can have a data's, um, a data's check that was this honored, either repayment and so on, okay? And then anything that reduces data, we say that, we can have cash received from data. When data pay us, it means that it is reducing the data. If you have things like bad debts written off, that would be the same thing. Because they also reduce your data. If you have sales returns, for example, you sold to customers and they return, that would happen. If you have discounts allowed, the same thing. So mine is now is to go and look from my question, what are some of those things that I can actually record within my data's control account, okay? So I'll just move up from the start of the question, okay? So cash payments, here I don't have anything that relates to, 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 to other side. Uh, cash sales, these cash sales don't affect the data's control account because they are direct cash sales. We just sold them directly, okay? And then they are telling us that 60% of the purchases were for cash. Now, this one, I'll still not take it for now because I, I don't have the purchases right now, but I'll find them, okay? Now, they are telling me that cash and bank receipts from credit customers was 15 million and 50, 450. Now, that, that transaction or that statement affects my sales ledger control account. And why does it affect? Because as long as it affects how much I have in data, okay? Because if I started, for example, like the way the way you saw, we have the we had the beginning ba balance at the start of the period. If there was somebody that was actually received from these credit customers, it means that our balance has to reduce, okay? 
our balance has to reduce. So I'm going to record the 15 million and uh, the 50 million, okay? And uh, the other side. So I'll just pick this and come here and say cash payment, okay? Or cash receipts. So cash receipts, I have a 15 million, okay? And I'm recording it on the credit side because it reduces, remember you've started with 15 million, okay? If your customers pay, you have to credit your debtors control account, just like the way you credit your normal debtors account, okay? Yeah. So the same thing I'll do also for the 50 million, for the 50, uh, for 50. I'll come here. I'll record my bank payment or bank receipt, sorry, from customers to be that amount, okay? So mine is to go and look for other items that may affect my contract account. Anything that reduces my data or anything that increases these data, okay? So uh, I'm done with this. I move now to the next part. Uh, John's nephew provided the following. Okay, these I've already captured. I already captured the, the receivables balances accordingly. Uh, this is about motor cycle. John's habit to take amount of money that does not affect my data at all. Bills and what during their loan and what all this does not affect my data. Okay, so since I've gotten all that affects my data control account, then my control account needs to balance, okay? My control account needs to balance. But as you can see, when I try to add this side, when I try to add this side, let me just try to put cosine here. So when I try to add this side, Okay, this is eight. Okay, so when I try to add this side, I get 84 million. And then when I try to add the other side, you see it only has 15 million, okay? It only has 15 million. Now, if you to understand how a data's control account works, we cannot miss something called the credit sales that increase your data's control account, okay? the credit sales. So in this case, since they have not given us the credit sales, the balance that the difference that we are going to get between the, the two sides is what we are going to take for our credit sales, okay? So the difference between this side and this side is basically our credit sales, which is our balancing figure, okay? So it is basically 69. Now, once we have this, our total here will now balance. We shall have the same total on the other side, okay? The reason why I don't, again, bring in a balance to carry it down is because we already have the balances. And these are the balances they have already given us. So these are the balances we have. So any difference that is happening between this side and this side is basically due to an item that is missing, okay? So that is why, that is why I've, come, I've come up with this credit sales value of 692630. Uh, so somebody will ask, some, uh, can it change? Can it be another thing other than the credit sales? I'll say that in most cases, most of the questions that you face, you face, face is that they will not give you this credit sales figure. And the reason why I've drawn up this account is to actually determine the credit sales figure. This is what I've, I've, I'm interested in, okay? And the reason why I'm interested in, in is because in the information that they have given me right here, the information they've given me here, they only gave me the cash sales. So they only gave me the cash sales to be what? To be 66734. They didn't give me the credit sales. Remember, this is a this is a uh, this is a business that works uh, that deals within uh, within cash and credit sales, okay? Because they already even told us here that they had some cash and bank receipts from customers. So I have to determine my credit sales. So that is the reason why I've actually gone ahead to draw up this account. 
which I'm calling my debtors control account or sales ledger control account, okay? So that is what has happened. So once I have my credit sales and I now have my sales, uh, these are cash sales, these were cash sales that I picked from the question. So these are cash sales. So once I, I do that have, now I can determine my total sales. My total sales definitely, of course, uh, will equal to now the 66, it's, bas it's basically the 66,734,000 plus the different, the 69,266,000 like that, okay? That is what we basically do have. So uh, I'll just try to get the answer here. Just trying to add this to this. So this give this gives us uh, 136 million. Okay. It gives me 136 million. Now I want you to pay uh, good attention and remove any distractions because what we are going to go, the next step is again something for you to learn. Okay. So they have gone ahead to give us uh, something here. They told us, remember this is single entry, so it's about figuring out uh, what you're supposed to do. But I want to tell you that these things are not hard. As long as after this question, you can try out more other three questions, okay? I want you to, I want you to know that uh, this will be much easier for you. Uh, maybe not to forget, after this question, I would encourage you to try out a question number two of November 2018. If you have a pen, please note it down. Question two, November 2018 is a very similar question to this, okay? It's a very similar question to this. So it will, it will be able to help you conceptualize some of the things that we are studying right here, okay? So that's uh, uh, very important. So with that in mind, I want us to use this. Now, they have, the reason why they have given you this value, they're telling you that sales margin, sales, John makes sales margin, okay, makes sales at a margin of 35%. John makes uh, sales at a margin of 35%. So let's see how, what this means. When you come right here, so they are telling us that our margin is 35%, okay? Now your question is what is margin? What, what is margin? Is, can somebody tell us what margin is? We have two things, by the way. We have margin and markup. We have margin and markup. So what is margin? Of course, in the normal, in the normal way, is margin is like, is like a profit, okay? A profit you've had. But the question is, how do you determine the margin? How would you determine a margin? Okay. Can somebody try? Or maybe you've studied this. I know you some of you must have studied this uh, at what? At 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 uh, maybe a portion of that you get of the total sales. Okay. Okay, Ramadan has tried. So what I'm going to basically do, um, margin. So I have two things and I want to, 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 to share with you right here. Okay, so like I said, we have margin and markup. We have margin and markup. So we have markup. Markup is usually on, on, on what? Markup is a percentage of profit over cost of sales times what? Times 100%. Okay? 
and, and please note these down, you, you may need them somewhere. Margin is profit divided by sales times what? Times 100%. That is what we basically do have. So those are our formulas, okay? Those are our formulas. So having that in mind, yours is also ask yourself now, every time, for example, for example, what they have given us. So since uh, they have given us this, I'm going to use that. This I'll just put it here, just in case you need it, okay? So if I have this picture, I have margin, okay? I basically have margin, I have my sales, I don't have my profit, okay? But if they are speaking of margin, especially at this level, okay? This margin, this profit, profit itself is what? Is sales less, cost of sales, okay? That this profit that we are talking about is sales less cost of sales. So it means that my margin can also be showed as, my margin can be sales less cost of sales, divided by divided by sales times what times a hundred percent okay that is that is how my margin can be so in this case you're going to understand why i'm taking this direction okay and why i've i've now dealt with profit and i've now replaced it with sales minus cost of sales, okay? Now, this question, I have my margin. So I have 35%, okay? I have my 35%. And this 35% they're telling me is equal to my sales. I now have my sales, okay? My sales, I got 136 million. So I have 136 million. I'm now replacing the figures, 136 million. Yeah, right there, minus 136 million, minus my cost of sales. Now, I don't know my cost of sales, and I'll just uh, denote it by cost, okay? Divided by what? Divided by 1.136 million. That is what I, I basically do have, okay? Mathematicians, uh, I know, are following. Times what? Times my 100%. Huh? Like that, okay? Times my 100%. So, I can, what I can do, uh, I can uh, try to, I'm going to modify this, this question, this uh, working. So, I'm going to first uh, divide by 100% each side, okay? So basically, this will be um, this will be thirty five divided by a hundred. Okay. Let me let me write it like this for consistency. So it is thirty five divided by a hundred. Okay. When I'm just I've just put this hundred down here. Okay. Divided through by a by a hundred by a hundred. Okay. To put it right there. And then once I have that, I'm now going to remain with 1.36. I'm basically going to remain this. Let me just copy and paste. This, uh, this would equal to, this is equal to this. Okay. I hope you're following my Excel. So once I have that, definitely this, uh, this is 0 0.35. I write 0 0.35 is equal to this. I've not changed, okay? 
So once I have that, I'm now going to uh, make course the subject. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this, this side, okay? So I'm going to multiply 0 0.35 times 136, and then I'll remain with 136 minus cos this side. And this is what I'm going to do, okay? 0 0.35 okay. times 1 uh, 1, 136 million. Okay. So that is uh, 447 is equal to, this is equal to, is equal to 136 million, okay, right there, less cost of sales. So that is what I'll, I'll basically do have. I know this one is going to disturb me because of a formula, but that is what basically I'll, I'll basically do have, okay? Let me, let me just rework it out here. Let's make this figure and make this equal sign for you to understand. So that is what I basically do have. So once I have this, I'll take course this side and bring the 47 this other side, okay? So in my cost of sales figure will now equal to 136 million minus 47 six, those zeros, okay? Minus 47 million, 600,000. And definitely my answer will just be equal sign this one. Will be 884,000, okay? 884, I hope you're following. So this is what I have. And this is my cost of sales, friends. Okay. This is my cost of sales. Now, why am I, why did I have first find the cost of sales? Remember what I stated up here, where I said that cost of sales is equal to opening stock plus purchases, less closing stock. Okay. So what I'm going to do, come down here, I'm going to come and do like this. So I now have my cost of sales, which is how much? 88. So I have my cost of sales right there. And we are saying that this is equal to, do I have my opening stock? When I come here, I actually have opening stock. Do you see this? This is my opening stock. So I'll pick this value and take it the other side. Write it there, okay? And then I am on this figure, I'm adding. What am I adding? I'm adding purchases. Do I know my purchases? I don't have my purchases. It is what I'm looking for. And that's why I'm doing all this. And then this should less what? Less my closing stock, which I also have here which is 7,560,000. So I'll bring it right here. Ah, right there. So that is what I basically have. So do you see how, how I'm getting my purchases very easily? So my purchases after a long period of time will equal to, it will be the 84 million, okay? Basically, let me just, it will be this 84 million, 88, 400,000, okay? I'm basically taking everything that this other side. So 88, 400,000 plus 7,560,500. Remember, I'm taking this seven, uh, 560,500 on the other side because it's a negative this side, so it will be a positive this other side, okay? And then I'll less the 4560,400 like that. 
Okay. I hope you can see that. And I hope that mathematics is not completed, com complicated for you. So with that, I'll get this value. 91 million, 400, 100. 91 million, 400, 1,100. So that is my purchases. So once I have my purchases, mine is to go back here. Remember why I'm, I'm looking for my purchases is to determine my cash purchases that I will include what in my cash book. So they have told me that 60% of the purchases were for cash. So I'll just get this, I'll, I'll come and calculate my, my cash purchases, okay? My cash purchases will equal 60% of this. So 0 0.6 of my answer right there. It is 54.84060. So this is the figure that I'm going to put where in my cash book, okay? And remember cash purchases are what? Are recorded on the credit side of the cash book. So these are my cash purchases. Right there, as you can see, 54 million, 840. 060 okay that is what we basically do have within within what within our cash book okay within our cash book so all along that is why why we've had to catch this. so once we have recorded our cash purchases i believe we didn't leave out anything else okay shall return to, to, to see how to use the rest of the figures. Once we have done that, ours is to, um, now, there's something that they are indicating right here. They are saying, these are cash purchases, but there's also a statement right here. They are saying payments to suppliers. Payment to suppliers during their way through bank. Okay. Now, yours is to look through and see do I have payments to suppliers? It is not anywhere. Okay. The payment to suppliers is not anywhere. But they have already told you it is what? Even when it came here, they only gave us salary and wages and trading license. So, what we have to do also is to go and look for the payments to suppliers. Okay, we have to look for the payments to suppliers. So how we are going to get the payments to suppliers? We are going to come back to our working here. Okay, now, before I proceed to draw up my, uh, you know, payments to suppliers, we are going to, to find it using our accounts payable control account. Okay, we are going to use our, uh, accounts payable control account. But before that, since I've determined my cash purchases, let me determine my credit purchase because I'm going to use them where I'm going to now. So my cash purchase, credit purchases will be this times what? Times 0 0.4, okay? Remember this was 0 0.6, 60%. So it means that automatically the other 40% is actually credit purchases, okay? So I'm going to draw up, uh, to determine my payments to suppliers, I'm actually going to, to draw up my what? My uh, accounts payable or creditors control account, okay? Let me call it creditors control account. I think somebody must be wondering, ah, this question, how would I have figured this out? I want to tell you that these things are easy to figure out if you practice, okay? I also didn't just uh, fall from the moon and go to know these things. 
that I can be able to figure out what next to do based on the question. So I want you to practice and make sure that you try out several questions. And don't say yeah, that question now, not do it when it comes, because you may actually end up to only have it as the only option to do. So you must learn. And this is simplistic accounting, by the way. OK, so it's very important for you. So my accounts payable control account, just like the way I did when it came to uh, the trade receivable control account, I'm going to use these figures. OK. I'm going to use these figures and this will be my balance brought down. This will be my balance brought down. So when I come here, balance brought down is this value, okay? I'm putting it on the credit side because these are creditors and creditors have a normal credit balance, okay? And now I'll pick, um, I'll pick 10 million that and put it as my balance carried down now the balance carried down is usually on the opposite side okay is usually on the opposite side okay um uh with that I'll now proceed to look at just like the way I did when it came to uh, when it came to the data's contract account. After I'd put the, the balances, my question was now to look for things that increase creditors and things that reduce creditors. Things that increase creditors are more credit purchases. Okay. So for example, the credit purchases will actually be here. And that is the key reason why I actually looked for this figure. So as it is here, I'll include it right there. The credit purchases also appear under your control account, okay? So that is why I'm including that value there, okay? Accordingly, 36. Okay, so once I have included that there, Mine is to now think of, uh, go and look in the question and see what else should I pick from the question, okay? Uh, so I'll come here. Um, analysis of payments made during there, cash payments right there. All this does not affect my creditors control account. I'll proceed cash sales for 2017, where that all this is now, I've already used it. Cash and bank receipts from credit customers, this I've already used it, does not relate to accounts payable. Payment suppliers during there were all through bank. Yeah, that is just for information purposes that after I've gotten the payments to suppliers figure, I should record it under the bank column, okay? Mine is to also look at this, balances i've already utilized these balances accordingly uh the motorcycle and furniture is full this is not related to what i want john's habit of taking out money those are drawings they don't relate to what i'm doing the total bill for water these are basically um this 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 uh are, are not relevant to uh payments to creditors these are, these are expenses. These are, remember purchases, the purchases contract account or the data's contract account only deals with purchases. Purchases mean we are buying for production or for resale, okay? Yeah. So expenses wouldn't appear within that account. And also things like loans, all these will not appear there. So I think I have all the information that should actually be in this account. So ideally, this account should be balancing okay this account should be balancing but i see the account is not balancing and what i'm seeing here i'm seeing that this side has 46 one to seven and this side has 10 five six four so my question is what what could be missing in my creditors control account that it should be on the debit side okay now the creditors control account, like we've seen, 
what increases it are credit purchases, which we already have. We have that figure. Now, what reduces your creditors is payments to creditors, okay? What you reduces your creditors is payment to creditors. And therefore, this difference between this other side and this side is actually our payments to creditors. Okay? This is how control accounts work, by the way, okay? So this difference, which is about 30, okay, which is the 46 minus the 10, is actually payments to creditors because payment creditors will definitely be debited. Remember, this is a debit and credit, okay? So payments to creditors reduce on your creditors and they are supposed to be debited. So right now I can now find the, the summation of the two things to give me, a, sorry, this is, should be plus this. Okay, so right there, my account balance. So once I have these payments to creditors, I'll pick it right away. I'll pick this value right away and take it where? Take it to my cash book, okay? I'll take it to my cash book right here. Yeah. And remember they told us that uh, these payments are made through bank, okay? from this statement. The reason why the examiner gave us this statement up here, uh, just for, so you know, there's a statement here. Um, payments to suppliers during there were all through bank. So I'll pick that exactly and put it there, okay? So once that, that is what I basically do have. I'll now go on to balance of this account, okay? Because I no longer have anything that I've not recorded here. At least I've recorded, I've uh, taken into consideration all this information accordingly. There's nothing I've left out. So that is all with my cash book. So I'm, I can balance it off, okay? I can balance it off. But uh, if you're in an exam, I would actually advise you this. The, the next part of this question, Sorry, is this the question? Yeah, I think it's a question. The next part of this question was asking us to draw up a P and L, okay? If I was part of this, this exam, I would first move directly to the statement of profit and loss and do what? And earn the free marks, okay? I would move to the, because what I've gotten from the cash book, I'm not going to use it in the P and the L, okay? I'm not going to use it in the P and the L. So I'll just move and at least get at least five direct marks to, to first manage time. And I'll only come back to the cash book in the last, last minutes of the exam when I'm done with getting the free marks. Remember, financial accounting is about first getting the entries, okay? First getting the entries. So once I'm done with the cash book, I'll now move to the P and L, but since we are in class here, I'll do this thing systematically, but just for your attention. The reason why I do that is because you're going to come to your cash book and now you're going to press your calculator. Imagine pressing all this information on your calculator. It's going to take you not less than 10 minutes or even more, okay? Because you even want to test and see, did I press rightly? So you want to repeat everything. So for me with using Excel here, it would be much easier for me, okay? To just, but because I know that cash, usually has a normal debit balance. So I know that this would dictate my balance for cash. So I'll just get uh, the summation of this. So this is one, one, one zero five. I just calculate uh, this and see, this is 78, okay? This is basically 78. So if I have uh, this value here also under my cash, it means that I should have what? I should have a balance carried down. We should have the difference, okay? And for me to just calculate the difference, I'll do, just do something very fast here. Now for me, it's, it's much, much easier because I'm using Excel, okay? 
and actually, by the way, uh, I think I spell with the COVID thing, they must be planning uh, things like this. I think uh, at SCCA, this is how they do. You do things in Excel, okay? So I'm getting 27. So which 27 now record right here, okay? So, Now at least this also adds to the same thing, it adds to that. So I've already uh, recorded my carry down right there, okay? So I'll now balance off bank. I'll balance off bank. Uh, Sam, Sam says, I went off kindly help with explanation. Uh, Sam, you go, you go through the recording, eh? uh, you go through the recording. You go through the recording. It's a it's a lot of, and we, we want to make sure that we finish uh, this this thing early. So the recording will be available to you. I will give it to you. So you forward and make sure that you listen to that uh, that exact part. Okay. So I'll move to. I'll just balance off uh, bank. Uh, this side has um, fifty two million, and this other side has thirty thirty five. Okay. So what I'm going to basically do. I'm going to, this side is higher. So this side is dictating the balance. So I'll, I'll get the difference here. I'll get the total here. And this total should also be the same total, this other side. But then it means that I, ha I have to determine, I have to determine uh, a balance carried down. So let me just total up these values. This is 35. So my carried down is 52 minus the 35 to get me 17 million, okay? So that is what I have. So I have 17 million. So those are my, my balances basically. So if I was drawing up my, um, if they had asked me to draw up my statement of financial position, these are the balances that I would take under my what? Under my um, statement of financial position. And also, when you get here, remember these question marks that we have on this question? The question marks we have on this question, we've at least determined this. We have also determined this, okay? Now these others, we can also determine them basically because we are now going to the P and the L, which P and the L records are the depreciation, okay? Yeah, but in both cases, this question, just because of uh, the 20 marks, this question would also have a statement of, of, of financial position, but it only ended on the statement of P and L, okay? It is really a long question, but I want to promise you that if you understand these things, it means you're going to take a little time to think, okay? You're going to, to walk very fast. Then you can easily finish this question in a very small period of time, okay? So I have done with the cash book. I will now move to um my p and l okay i'll move to my p and l so i hope you're following and i hope you're noting down whatever you can note down okay and i said of course um these things can be learned with time okay these things can be learned with time you don't need to be a superman at first but once you have a positive heart and you put in the hard work, okay, then you get there. So this is John's, and you must love these things, by the way. Never say that topic, me, I don't like it, okay? So this is for the period, because you, you make your mind fixed. 31st December 2017, okay? So that is what we have. And you know, uh, statement of P and L starts with what? This starts with sales, okay? This starts with sales. I'll just create amounts. Um, should I work in a thousands? Let me just work in the normal, the normal since this is Excel for me. But where you you think that you uh, your figures in a thousands or millions, you can put a degree of precision in a thousands, okay? Now, uh, well, since I have the space, so sales, mine is to ask myself, do I have the sales figure? Of course I have the sales figure. When it came to the working, I determined my sales somewhere. Remember I was given cash sales. I drew up the, the data's control account and determined my 
credit sales, okay, which were 69 that, and my total sales came to 136 million, okay? So I'll just come to write uh, to my question that I'm answering and record my sales figure. I'll record it under this column since uh, uh, for this to be systematic somehow. I'll record it there. Then after sales, definitely the next thing I'll do is less cost of sales. Less cost of sales. Okay. Now yours is to ask yourself, do we have the cost of sales? Yes, we also have cost of sales. Remember we calculated it somewhere. We calculated our cost of sales figure. We calculated it and it was 84 this. It is already here. But for because you, you want to earn the marks from the examiner, you know, the exam, examiners are very funny. Okay. okay. Remember, this is presentation. They don't only mark you for uh for, for the figures, but also presentation. So I'll repeat what I, I did exactly the other side. So I'll put my opening stock. Opening stock. Okay. I'll list my purchases, which I already have. Oh, so, sorry, add purchases. And less closing stock. Why did I put more less closing stock? Okay like that, just to get the marks, because these are 10 marks, so I want to make sure I the examiner doesn't have any. So I'll just pick the figures from here. Uh, this was my uh, opening stock, but I can also pick it from uh, the question. So you can see where I'm picking it from. So I'll still take this figure. This was my opening stock at 1st of January. Opening stock, that one. Then I'll add my purchases, which I've just calculated. Purchases, I calculated my purchases. Uh, my purchases were, where, 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 91, 400. So I'll put it there. And then I'll list my closing stock. Okay. My closing stock will come from the question. This value right there. Okay. Yeah, that is what I basically do have. Mm -hmm. That is what I basically do have. So from that, I can basically determine my cost of sales, eh? which I already have, but uh, here I'm just trying to repeat for the examiner. So my cost of sales is basically this plus this okay you just add since already has a has a has a negative on it to get 88 400 that okay then uh after that i can determine my gross profit or gross loss which gross profit i also even have already but uh Presentation matters. It is 136 minus 88, and I have 40, 47, 600,000, okay? After I have that, I'll move to less operating expenses. Now this is where the other drama is, operating expenses, because I have now to calculate, okay? Less my operating expenses. Now, I'll go back to the information I have to get my operating expenses. So when I get here, they are telling me that uh, analysis of payments, I have payments, remember I have payments, and then I also have um, these balances they have given me. And then down there, they have also given me something. Okay, I have this, I'm going to use for depreciation. But let me see if I can get some some questions, okay? Some or, or some some free free marks right here. Now, do you see what they are saying? They are saying further information available shows the total bill for water for there is this. 
So it means that for what I'm, I don't have to calculate, I've already been given the total, the total bill for the year. So this is what I should recognize in my books. Remember, I don't recognize what I paid, okay? I recognize the overall bill. So as what we paid is about 1.5, the overall bill for the year is 2.3. So this is what I'll go and I don't recognize. I, so I start with the free marks. So that if time catches me up, at least I've, I've recorded the water bill, okay? So water bills, that value I record right here in that column. I'll do the same thing also for, um, for rent. And by the way, this is how it happens. For example, the exam is going to end at uh, 36 minutes. So you, you're trying to, to, the to the end of the exam. So you're trying to get some few marks, okay? So this is rent. Sorry, I copied again the word rent instead of the amount. Ah, they're telling me that the rent, the rent, uh, okay. The rent paid covers 18 months. Okay, let me start with calculating rent. Remember rent has been given to me. The overall payment is 18 million, okay? So I should get the portion that relates to, to the year. So what I'll just do right here, I can just do in the bracket here. For me to get the rent for the year would be basically what I paid, the whole uh, 18 million, the 18, is it 18 million? Or it, okay, let me just try to confirm if there's a degree of precision here. Yeah. So this figure is in a thousand, so it is 18 million basically, okay? So I'll do 18 million.
All right, so apologies, uh, the quest, uh, my internet here threw me out. Just like the way the examiner would say that you have a few minutes to go. So it's the same thing that happened to me here. Let's finish the question and be able to go. We're about to finish, uh, so apologies about that. So um, the time I went off, I was trying to explain more about how to determine the risk. And I say that uh, given the question that they have given us, we have to determine the rent that leads to, to the year, okay? We have to determine the rent that leads to, to the year. So the rent that leads to 18 months was 18 million but they told us that that is relates to 18 months. So I was trying to determine what relates to, to the year, okay? So right here, I'm going to get 12 million, okay? I get 12, okay, 12 million, like that. So I have, after I'm done with that, I'm now going to look at other expenses so I'm done, I'm done with water, I'm done with, um, with, uh, with what? With rent, definitely this is about a loan. Now this, uh, if this loan had interest, I would definitely interest myself with this statement, but uh, this is an interest free loan, uh, which has, so it has nothing to do with my expenses. It only has in, 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 uh, something to do with my expenses, if at all, there is something to do with interest, okay? Yeah, so I'll move up. Uh, drawings, these drawings also don't have any uh, big big hand in, in my expenses, OP and L. If I had a, a, try, uh, a balance sheet to draw, a statement of financial position, then this would be very important for me, okay? So what I'll do now, um, I'll now go ahead to determine, I think, I'll go ahead to determine uh, the depreciation, okay? As you can see, they gave us different question marks here. Now, as you can see right here, they say the motorcycle and furniture have a useful life of five years and six years respectively, and are depreciated on straight line method, okay? They are depreciated on straight line method, and they gave us the cost value they gave us the, um, uh, the cost value of furniture. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and calculate depreciation. So under my working down here, my working, I'll calculate depreciation. Okay, calculate depreciation. So I'm going to calculate it for motor vehicle or motorcycle. Motorcycle, is it motor vehicle or motorcycle? Sorry, I think it's motor vehicle. It's motorcycle, uh -huh. Okay, so motorcycle has five years and then it, it has the cost of this. So let me just try to copy these values here. So you basically know, so that is what I have. So, so, the, co so the cost value is 4.5. So cost is 4.5. Like, like as you can see there, we have 4.5. So they are telling us that this is for six, for five years, okay? Five years, and it is depreciated as straight line. Now, as you can see, they have actually not given us, in most cases, they'll give you the depreciation percentage, okay? They will give you the depreciation percentage, but in this question, they have rather given you the useful life of the asset and they have also given you the cost okay so you should be able to to determine depreciation of course uh using um using use you you just using the formula of calculating depreciation okay so what we shall basically do is for example for motorcycle we shall get 4.5 divided by five okay the method that I'm trying to use here is uh, 
depreciation depreciation is equal to cost minus scrap value cost minus scrap value divided by this is being divided by all over being divided by um the useful life being divided by the, the useful life so in this case i've not been given the scrap value okay they have only given me the cost and they have given me the useful life so i'll just do i will assume the, use, the scrap value is zero okay so uh, the numerator will only remain 4.5 so i'll have 4.5 there I have 4.5 divided by what divided by uh divided by divided by five years okay so this is uh basically about 90 900 000. so I'll just come here and say depreciation depreciation uh have motorcycle so I'll I'll include this figure that I've gotten the nine hundred thousand as my depreciation here for motor cycle. Okay, then I'll do for furniture as well. I'll do also for furniture. Now for furniture, as you can see, furniture the cost is nine million. Okay, nine million. So basically, what I'm going to do is nine million divided by by six because it's also a straight line method. Okay. 9 million divided by 6. So this is 9 million. 9 million divided by 6. Sorry. 9 million divided by 6. So this gives me 1.5. Of course, if you're, if you're in the exam, make sure that you include the working right here. So that the examiner can find how to work to mark you. Okay. So um, so since I have that, mine is just to confirm that I don't have anything I've left out. Okay. So all this, at least I've uh, noted it. Whatever is relevant to me. Uh, motorcycle. This one I've depreciated. These are drawings. They are not part of. Uh, what i should record now when you go up okay these are balances basically but right here what will affect my p and l is this salaries salaries outstanding balances so i'm going to drop a salaries account okay but before that we also have other expenses here i think we had the electricity bills okay so electricity bills, uh, they didn't have any other additional information on them. So this one, I'll just pick it and put it the way it is, okay? So I'll just pick electricity bill and put it the other side the way it is. Like that. Then I'll come, okay. It should be in a, it should be in a thousand since I'm myself I'm working in a thousand. Let me just add the three zeros so that it doesn't. So that that is the value five point six. Okay. So we have electricity bill. Um. Then the other was salaries and wages, which I'm going to, to do uh, a calculation on. But before that, let me first get this uh, trading license that is uh, open here seven fifty. So I'll just go to trading license as is also an expense and record it there. It didn't have any additional information. So that's why I record it immediately. So this is 750,000 like that, okay? So um, once I have that, now let me do the salaries thing, okay? Now for the salaries, as you saw, we had, um, we had the salaries and wages the payments that was made in the period. We also have um, the salaries that are in the balances. We have something in the opening balance and then something in the closing balance, okay? Now, anyone who uh, has not gone through this class will just pick these salaries and wages here. But remember, these are only payments, okay? 
And we do, when we are doing the P and L, we don't only record the payments, but we record the whole overall bill, okay? And that is why uh, we, we cannot take the 6.5 directly. We have to calculate them. So I'm going to draw up my salaries and wages account, okay? I'm going to draw up a salaries and wages account. That's my next working salaries and wages account, okay? Okay. So I'll have what I'm, go I'm basically going to have, I'm going to have um, my balance brought down. Now, based on what I have here, it's going to dictate how I'm going to treat my balances. The balances I'm going to use are balances that have been given here, okay? So you're seeing that telling us that salary is outstanding, the balance brought down is 1.7. So I'm going to record this 1.7 as my salary is outstanding, as my balance. But remember salary is outstanding are liabilities and liabilities have a normal credit balance. So what I'm going to basically do is once I come here, I'm going to record it on this side because this, 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 these are liabilities. So I'm going to have my balance brought down balance brought down and these are outstanding maybe just to uh not to confuse you or just these are salaries outstanding balance brought down i'll record it here as that value and then i'll have uh, my balance carried down balance carried down uh which is similar to outstanding in the same way but in this case, I'm going to record 3.4, okay? I'm going to record 3.4. So right there, okay? So that's what I'm going to record now. So once I do have this now, just to highlight to you that in case they had given me prepayment, prepaid salaries, not, not salary, uh, outstanding salaries, what I would have done, prepaid salaries, balance brought down would have been here and balance carried down would have been this side. Okay, so it's good for you to note. I only did this because these are liabilities. Since I put this balance brought down here, I put the balance carried down on the opposite side, just like the way I did when it came to, um, I think you saw it when we did the credit, the, the control accounts, okay? As you put the balance here, you put the balance here. The same thing also, we also did when it came to the sales ledger. We put the balance brought down here, according to our double entry, what we, we, we know, and then the alternative the balance carried down was on the alternative side. Okay. So that's important. So once I have put these amounts here, main is to ask myself what increases my salaries and what reduces my salaries. So what increases my salaries are new salaries for the period. Okay. And what reduces my salaries are salaries paid, payments for salaries. So you know this, this that they have given us up here. This value of salaries and wages, I'll just pick it the way it is. The salaries and wages value, this is what I'll do. I'll come here, salaries and wages, and I'll record this here. Remember, this is a payment. So a payment is credited in the, in the salary and wages account because it, it, it does, um, it, uh, it, it reduces on, your, on, on the outstanding value, okay? So um, like we said, what increases salaries is actually credit is, is, is actually our salaries coming into place, okay? So um, what we shall basically do, here, this is what we are starting with as outstanding. And what we are saying is what increases it are the new, are the new salaries that are coming into place. So, New salaries that are coming into place are like the salaries for the period, okay? They will be here, just to re, uh, re, re, restate this. And then anything that reduces salaries. Now we have, like I said, we have this value, this 6,500. So this 6,500 actually reduces, it basically reduces what was outstanding, okay? So for it, we record it right here because it was, it was actually a bank payment. 
So I'll record bank right here. Okay. Salaries and wages. I don't again call it salaries and wages. It's in, it's in the respective account. And then um, now uh, this this has three zeros to add on it. Okay. So now, as you can see, the same way we did the other side, this account does not balance. So I'm going to balance it off here. I'll get 9.9. .9. And here it has 1.7. So it means that there is a balancing figure. And this balancing figure are the salaries and wages for the year. The salaries and wages for the year which is uh, nine minus this 1.6, oh, it's, 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 it's 8.2, our answer. So these salaries and wages for the year are the ones that we take to our P and L, okay? Are the ones that we bring right here. So as you've determined it here, you now bring it right here, okay? Yeah. So yours is now to look through the question and see, is there anything that have left out? At least all this I recorded, okay? Because rent, water bill, they gave us a figure, electricity bill I recorded, salaries and wages I also recorded. I've now just recorded it, trading rises, I've recorded it. These cash sales, I all got all these figures, I got the purchases to do sort of, I've been able to, um, to depreciate this, Okay, um, the other, I've taken into consideration this value, I've also depreciated accordingly. There was no effect here. So if, if at all you've taken into consideration everything, yours is to go, to go and find your total expenses, okay? My total expenses, the summation of all this, which gives me 3129 that now when i compare that with uh, what what i do have up okay because remember i had 47600 as in terms of my gross, gross profit when you subtract the 3129 uh, 290 you are able to get a net profit and this net profit is basically this minus this to get you 16 million three hundred and ten thousand okay so this is the unit profit and this is where the question basically ends okay so thanks so much uh those that have been able to keep here uh for this long to be able to follow through this uh those that uh, went off i believe they'll be able to catch the recording otherwise thank you so much Please re go back uh, by the, the, the best way to even pass this question or to, the best way to learn from your side is after we've done this question together, I know we've done it at a very speedy uh, rate, go and look at the question and do it yourself. When you do it yourself, you're able to remember some of the things that we did right here. And if there's anything that needs clarification, then you should be able to get that from the recording, okay? Yeah. So that is uh, very important. So go and look out for, I gave you that question of November, 2018. So make sure that you find that question and try it out also. And where possible, you can share your, your solution on the, on the WhatsApp group. And then uh, we can be able to compare answers from the respective uh, people, okay? Otherwise, thank you so much and I uh, wish you uh, all the best in the rest of the day. Bye-bye.